Hey everyone, Dr. Armagani here today to talk to you about common conditions of the spine that can cause pain and discomfort. Are you experiencing or have you experienced pain in the back that shoots into one or both of your legs? Numbness or tingling that goes into your calf or foot? Do you experience these symptoms more with standing or walking, or is it worse with sitting? There are a few common conditions of the spine that can cause these symptoms. Today, we'll cover one of those, lumbar stenosis. We will cover the normal MRI anatomy so you have a better idea of what your surgeon is looking at, as well as the causes, symptoms, and reasons why you hurt. At the end of the video, we will go over the usual plan of care, including treatments, so you have a better idea of what to expect if you unfortunately have these symptoms. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, now that we're in, let's begin our discussion on lumbar stenosis. Before we get started on our discussion on this particular condition, we have to have a little bit better understanding of what the normal MRI anatomy is of the lumbar spine. Frequently, patients come in already with an MRI, so let's take a look at some of these anatomic landmarks so you have a better understanding of what we're looking at. So if you take a look over here, you're going to have a normal MRI of your low back. And again, this is completely normal, but this is a side view. What does that mean? Well, an MRI basically takes slices of your body, and this particular slice goes right down the middle of your body. So there isn't really a left or a right, we're looking at you right in the middle, okay? So to orient you, the skin of your back is going to be over here on the right side of the screen, and the front of your body is going to be over here on the left. The muscles and spinous processes are highlighted here in blue. These are the bones that you can feel when you're actually touching your lower back, and the dark spaces in between are the muscles and ligaments that connect the bones. In red are the building blocks that make up your spinal column, and these are called the vertebral bodies, highlighted here in red. These bones are supposed to stack up right on top of each other like building blocks. And in between those building blocks, you're going to have the discs. The discs are a rubbery type material which helps give you cushion in between your vertebral bodies and also contributes to flexibility in your lower back. The fecal sac is in between the spinous processes and the vertebral body. Imagine a long balloon beginning at the base of your skull and extending all the way down to your lower back. Now imagine that long balloon filled with fluid and inside of it is um, angel hair spaghetti or horse hair. That water is going to be spinal fluid and the horse hair is going to be your nerve rootlets. All of that resides within the fecal sac. When surgeons are trying to think about what are the different causes of a patient's particular issue, we try to think of the location in which it occurs. Patients can have discomfort or pain in their leg or buttock area, just their back, or sometimes a combination of both. Let's take a look at some of these conditions which can cause purely back pain. These can involve degenerative disc disease, which happens with normal aging, scoliosis, which is a curvature of the spine from side to side, kyphosis, which is a curvature of the spine front to back, and then there's the black box, which we don't know what exactly is the cause of patient's back pain. This could be any number of reasons, including muscle imbalances or arthritis of the joints. Different conditions that can cause purely leg and buttock pain can involve conditions of the hip, such as arthritis, or peripheral neuropathies. But there are some conditions that can cause back pain as well as leg and buttock pain to certain degrees. Those conditions of the spine include spinal stenosis, lumbar spondylolisthesis, as well as disc herniations. Today though, we'll be discussing spinal stenosis. What are the symptoms of spinal stenosis? When patients come in to me with this kind of condition, they can describe discomfort mostly in their buttock and hamstrings, but can also extend down into their calves and feet. This can also involve sensation loss or weakness, such as their legs giving out. Infrequently, this can cause purely back pain. This isn't a typical pattern, though. And that pattern generally involves the discomfort worsening the longer they're standing and walking, and improves when they either sit down, lay down, or lean over something, such as a cart in a grocery store. What's the cause of spinal stenosis? Well, to learn about this, let's go back to our normal MRI of our lumbar spine, and let's orient you here again. This is looking at you from the side as if we took a slice right down the middle of your body. So the skin of your back is going to be over here on the right side, and your intestines in the front of the body are going to be over here on the left. Your thecal sac is going to be highlighted here in yellow, but as we age, a couple different changes happen to our lower back. These involve disc bulging, as well as ligament thickening. 
you have a ligament in the back of your spine which connects all the bones and that's highlighted here in blue. As we get older that can become thickened. Now let's look at the space for the thecal sac in different areas. Over here, the thecal sac has a ton of room. There are no nerve pinching. Same thing over here. But in this particular area where you have disc bulging and ligament thickening, you do not have a lot of space for that thecal sac and your nerves are getting pinched in this particular area. That's what's causing the symptoms. Now let's see what this looks like in an actual example. And you can see this here. The thecal sac is highlighted here in yellow again, and we can see that the thecal sac has a ton of room in this area here and this area here. But due to disc bulging on the left side and ligament thickening on the right side, there is not a lot of space for the thecal sac and nerve rootlets in this particular area. Imagine that long balloon going from the base of your skull all the way down to your lower back. In this particular example, it's almost like if somebody took that long balloon and just pinched it in one particular area. That's why you're having symptoms. Why do I hurt is a common question I get from patients, and the honest answer is we don't really know the exact answer as to why. We think that it may be related to blood flow changes in the lower back, but what we do know is that this is a structural issue. You simply do not have enough space for your thecal sac and nerve rootlets in one area or sometimes multiple areas. But we do know the body tends to try to adapt to this. We do know that when you lean forward or if you sit down, that space for the spine tends to increase and that's why the pain or discomfort is relieved in those certain positions. That's why you may notice when you walk in a grocery store, you may lean over the cart. Once a patient is diagnosed with spinal stenosis, they frequently ask, will I get better from this? And for the vast majority of patients, that answer is going to be yes. But how will that happen though? What we do know is that for many, many patients, they tend to get much better with conservative care. What are involved in conservative care though? That can involve medications in the form of anti-inflammatories and steroids. Physical therapy and chiropractic care can help to some degree by keeping you loose as well as your core strong and increasing your flexibility. But sometimes you may need a little bit more and that can involve epidural steroid injections which can be a local administration of numbing medication and steroid which can help decrease the inflammation related to the physical compression that you're experiencing in your lower back. What is the process by which I'm going to get better though? Well, for a patient that I suspect having lumbar stenosis, we bring them in and I do a thorough history and physical exam to make sure that that is what I think is causing their discomfort. Once we determine that, we start them on a course of medication including anti-inflammatories and steroids, as well as a course of physical therapy to help with their lower back strength and core strength as well as flexibility. We bring them back in about four to six weeks and at that point, many patients are already improved. For those subset of patients that aren't improved, we have to get a better understanding of where exactly they have the structural compression of their thecal sac and nerve rootlets. To do that, we get an MRI. We bring the patient back in one to two weeks, and at that point, some patients are just better with time. But for that unfortunate subset of patients that aren't better, we now know where their physical compression is, and we can target that more closely with an epidural steroid injection if they wish. What we do then is we do a localized administration of numbing medication and steroid to those specific locations that are compressed, and we try about one to three of these shots. At that point, some patients improve as well. So the one thing that I want to get through to everybody watching this video is that after about one to three months, many of patients who have these kinds of symptoms are improved. However, there will be that unfortunate subset of patients that aren't improved, and for those people, surgery may be a good option for them. So what exactly does surgery entail? Well, surgery can involve a number of different procedures. Mostly this has to do with different factors including your age and what your MRI looks like. But that can involve non-fusion procedures such as a lumbar laminectomy or decompression. Or it can involve fusion type procedures which can involve a transforaminal lumbar inner body fusion, an oblique lumbar inner body fusion, or an anterior lumbar inner body fusion. If you'd like to learn more about these surgeries, please click the links in the description below for educational videos covering these surgeries. What are the advantages of surgery if this is something you choose to do? Well, what we know is that when we looked at thousands and thousands of patients just like you who may have symptoms of spinal stenosis, we divided them into groups who chose to have a surgical procedure versus those who continue to try non-operative measures. 
What we found is that those who chose to have surgery after one and two years saw significant benefits compared to the non-operative group in terms of their physical pain, function, and disability. So patients who chose to undergo surgery over continuing with non-operative measures saw significant improvements in these three domains. And that's the overview of lumbar stenosis. Okay, so there you have it. You've learned today about the anatomy, symptoms, causes, and treatments for spinal stenosis. Remember though, the majority of patients with this condition do get better with conservative treatment. Surgical management for this is only reserved for those who don't get better with conservative care. If you or someone you care about may be having these symptoms and you would like to have a consultation with me, you can find our office phone number in the links below, or you can click book an appointment above if you're on our website, www.armaganispine.com. I can also be found on these other various platforms here. And if you're on YouTube, please comment, hit like, and subscribe to be notified about future educational videos such as these. Take care.